we're just about to go over to Israel to talk to a lieutenant colonel there about uh, events that are escalating in the region. Obviously, Iran is firing missiles or has been firing missiles at Israel. Israel uh, seems to be in the process of invading Lebanon. Uh, the situation is tense, to say the least. Before we do go to Israel, uh, as I said, we waited a long time for our Prime Minister, Sir Keir Starmer, uh, to respond to this situation, uh, but he's finally done it. I read it, you had a statement uh, a little earlier. Uh, here he is in action at number 10 Downing Street. We stand with Israel and we recognise her right to self-defence in the face of this aggression. Iran must stop these attacks, together with its proxies like Hezbollah. Iran has menaced the Middle East for far too long. Chaos and destruction brought not just to Israel, but to the people they live amongst in Lebanon and beyond. Make no mistake, Britain stands full square against such violence. We support Israel's reasonable demand for the security of its people. Well, uh, he's getting better, I must say. Uh, let's uh, go over to Israel now and talk to uh, former Deputy Speaker of the Israeli Parliament, and he's an IDF Special Forces operator as well, Lieutenant Colonel Yoni Chetboon. Uh, welcome, Yoni. Uh, first of all, I don't know if you just uh, caught uh, Keir Starmer, our Prime Minister's response to the situation. Earlier on, he issued a statement that didn't actually defend Israel's right to defend itself, which I thought was a bit remiss, uh, Joe Biden having done just that about an hour and a couple of hours ago. Uh, but that statement he just made at number 10 Downing Street, does that satisfy you? See, it's an important statement of Prime Minister of Great Britain, of England, because the Iran Iranian threat, it's an international threat. It's not an issue just for Israel. And I'm happy that more and more countries and states understand that we should do all together to eliminate this uh, regime and this threat. Uh, which uh, city are you in uh, at the moment, Yoni? Is it Jerusalem or Tel Aviv? Where are you? I'm very close to Tel Aviv. I spent my last hours with my wife and kids and my kids in the bomb shelters uh, while the Israeli forces with the, our amazing cutting-edge technology and the spirit of the state of Israel uh, intercepted the uh, hundreds of missiles launched by Iranian to Israel without any um, serious uh, Israeli injury. It's amazing, and I'm very proud that Israel achieved to do that. Absolutely. But, Absolutely. What was it like, though, to be under fire like that? Were, were you personally surprised at the uh, ferocity of the uh, Iranian response? The Iranian, uh, in the, they were in a bad situation. Israel achieved to uh, destroy their pra proxies, Hamas in the south, Hezbollah in Lebanon. So the Iranian, the Iranian regime, and the and the uh, of course the terror organization there understand that the next step will be Iran. And tonight, it should be clear that Iran failed. Iran wanted to kill thousands of men, women, and children. Uh, Israel is winning this war, will continue to win, to win this war until the total victory. How do you expect Israel to respond uh, to the firing of missiles by Iran at Jerusalem and Tel Aviv? Tonight, I prefer not to export the reaction of Israel, but Israel cannot live with a nuclear Iran, Iran and there will be a heavily respond like our prime minister and the chief of the Israeli chief of staff said before. Indeed. Declared. Now, uh, in the north, uh, in terms of Lebanon, uh, I mean, we've seen essentially the, the land invasion begin uh, very tentatively, I guess, but the tanks are rolling in. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you won't want to give away military secrets, but uh, can we expect that invasion uh, to escalate? 
the the question is not escalation the question we israel will do all the efforts to move back their citizens to their houses in the north and at the same time to destroy and to eliminate the hezbollah capabilities mm. if it will take one week or three months i don't know what we are going to do that we have a great example what we have done in uh, Gaza with the Hamas organization, terror organization, after the 7th of October were surprised Israel decided to eliminate and destroy Hamas capabilities. And now we are getting to do that with destroying their military capabilities. We all know what's happening right now in Gaza. Of course, we are still wait and do all the efforts to bring uh, bring home our hostages, but we have the same patient and the same attending to destroy the military capabilities of Hezbollah in order to protect our citizens in the north. I can tell you right now from Israel that the Israeli people is very strong. There is, I feel the spirit here, what's happening when I speak with people here, I feel the, uh, we are feeling the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the approach, the move, the, uh, the spirit that coming also from our leadership, the decision of the IDF, the decision of the uh, Israeli government to protect the Israeli citizens by itself or with our partners around the world. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, Israel has had an amazing three weeks or so with the pager attacks, the walkie-talkies, the bombing, and, of course, uh, the strategic targeted bombing, uh, which has wiped out seven of the Hezbollah's main leaders. Now, uh, we in the West over here, we're always reading about, oh, Israel will be very, very reticent about Hezbollah. They are an awesome military force, you know, uh, and uh, the capable of great... Uh, you know, military operations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, uh, what's your take on this? Because so far, I mean, Israel, as I say, has scored these re basically three weeks of remarkable successes, and we're not seeing much of a response from Hezbollah. We know seven of their leaders have been killed. Uh, do you feel that Hezbollah has been significantly weakened by Israel over these past few weeks? Yeah. Hezbollah before the last three weeks is not the same Hezbollah. I'm a lieutenant corner in the in reserve in the Israeli army. I fought during the second Lebanon war in 2006. I've met face to face Hezbollah. And I know after, of course, 11 months of attacking and, of, and specifically after the last week, it's not the same Hezbollah. It's a, it's the, we eliminated the leadership of Hezbollah Hezbollah is confused, but again, it is, it, this is a terror organization. It's not a state. Mm. It won't take uh, uh, one week or two weeks to limit all these capabilities. We are very decisive to destroy Hezbollah. We are very decisive to bring, to move back our citizens back to the north. Uh, but you are right. Hezbollah is in, in a bad in bad situation, but we but the main issue is not Hezbollah right now. The head of the snake is Iran, and I'm very happy that more and more states around the world, specifically in the west side of the world, understand that this coalition, in order to prevent Iran to be to, to prevent the nuclear Iran, it's a worldwide mission. It's not just an Israeli issue or problem. But uh, final question, Yoni. W w you, you talked of the head of the snake, Iran being the head of the snake. Uh, do you predict uh, that fairly soon uh, Israel will endeavour to cut that head off? This is, uh, like I said before, please tonight, I won't, we won't talk about the Israel response, but like I said before, Iran is this, the head of the snake. We cannot leave a nuclear Iran. And I understand that tonight, after hundreds of missiles were launched from Iran to Israel, and after Israel achieved 
to um, get this to destroy Hamas in in the south and the same thing in Lebanon of course the next step should be Iran uh, it's uh, uh, an ominous situation but really good to catch up with you Yoni uh, thank you so much for your time uh, Lieutenant Colonel Yoni Chetbourne there uh, over there in Tel Aviv or near Tel Aviv at the moment uh, was saying that earlier on he had to uh, retreat to a bomb shelter with his wife and kids so that's happening to everybody we spoke to Zari earlier same story he had to find himself a safe room in his house you know this is like the blitz or something you know the bombs are coming down and the people have to find shelter Delta. Extraordinary, extraordinary. Uh, we will watch uh, with interest as events develop over there uh, and obviously keep you uh, right up to date throughout the rest of the show. Uh, let's uh, take some calls now though. Let's go to uh, Jackie in Dorset. Uh, hi Jackie. Hello there. Thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. Uh, what I wanted to say uh, was that Despite the late uh, announcement from uh, our so, government, yeah. where are the opposition? There are four contenders to lead the, uh, the Conservative government, or Conservative Party, I should say, mm -hmm. and nobody has come out with a word. Are they too scared? I, 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 mean, I, just think, I just think that, that they become an irrelevance. I mean... To be honest with you, most people couldn't care less who wins the next Tory uh, leadership battle. Uh, and and they've, cer they've certainly backed themselves into an irrelevant corner. Uh, yes, you would, Jackie, in normal circumstances, expect the leader of the opposition to have some comment on such a dramatic moment in uh, world history. Uh, but uh, we've had nothing but radio silence. What did you make about Keir, uh, of Keir Starmer? He took his time, but in the end, uh, I didn't think he was too bad when he, he talked of uh, defending Israel's right to defend itself? Uh, well, not too bad is right. Hmm. Uh, I, I, he could have done better, but OK, he, he finally came out with it very belatedly, in my opinion. I agree with you. It took way too long, and we know what they're discussing. They're discussing uh, in Labour Towers uh, what to say so as not to offend the Muslim vote because uh, Keir wants to stay friends with the Muslims because although he's got a very big uh, majority at the moment at the next election, he suspects it won't be as big and he's right about that and he might need his friends, the Muslims, help. So that's what's going on in his mind and that's wrong on so many levels. But uh, there you have it, politics. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And by the time we get the next election, there'll be very many more Muslim voters, won't there? Yeah, I think there probably will be. Uh, Jackie, uh, very good call. Thank you so much for ringing. Ring me again. Jackie in Dorset. Uh, let's go to Mark. Well, we're going all over the world tonight, aren't we? We're going to Marbella in Spain to talk to Jane. Hi, Jane. Hi, Kevin. How are you? I'm very well. I was in your home city last week. Wh which one? London or...? Yeah, Hampstead. Oh, were you? Were you? How yeah, was yeah. it? A lovely place, eh? Yeah, I know it very well. My family lived there. Excellent, excellent. Uh, well, yeah, well uh, I hope... I... the best people. Yeah. Excellent. Kevin, I am seizing... Mm -hmm. Go on. <laughs> Your charming Prime Minister was probably in Savile Row tonight. That's why he was delayed. <laughs> Picking um... up some more free clothes, yeah. <laughs> Prior to the election, he didn't stop talking about Judaism and his Jewish father-in-law. Isn't it incredible that it took him so long tonight to make a statement? Uh, it, it is, it is, but we know why. Uh, this is a, this is a difficult uh, navigation feat by the Labour Party. They want Indeed. to they want to remain friends with the Muslim community and a kind of unequivocal statement of support for marvelous Israel wouldn't go too down too well in the mosques. Kevin, so, I'd like just to mention you would be amazed. I mean, I'm not religious, but I'm Jewish. You would be quite amazed the number of pe young people 
and older emigrating to Israel at this moment. That's the, that's the, I know why. Because uh, despite the troubles there, they feel more at home, uh, more wanted. They feel, they feel more at home. I mean, it's not. I mean, I have a nephew living there, and his father has said, "Come back," and his wife is Israeli and won't. Well, uh, I've told you. I mean, you've you've heard me say on the show that you know, I, I as you know, as you said, I live in Hampstead, a very Jewish area, uh, and uh, you know, I have Jewish neighbours, and I've, I have friends who are six, a couple of friends in their sixties. They've lived there all their lives. They're British, you know. They're, yeah. they're British, and they're thinking of leaving because they, they the anti-Semitism. You know, it's really. I worrying. mean, you know, I woke up the other morning to my telephone to the stabbing in bombs. Yeah, that one. It's yeah. happening everywhere. But let me tell you, what people I don't think realise, in Israel, every property built 40 years ago and beyond has shelters. Yeah, well, they, they need shelters. At this rate, we're going they to need them in this country shelters. as well. Yeah. And properties over 40 have a designated area. Yeah. I really don't think people, Israelis and people living there, are as nervous as we are no. listening to it. Well, well may maybe uh, not until tonight. I think we, everybody all over the world ought to be a bit nervous, but uh, sometimes being on the scene is less frightening than watching it from afar. You've got a good point there, Jane. Uh, Jane, excellent to uh, talk to you. Thank you uh, for your kind words about Hampstead. Uh, and uh, let's talk again soon. Jane there in Marbella. We better go to break and uh, afterwards we'll catch up uh, with more information, more news of what's going on in the Middle East. Uh, just to recap, of course, as you know, Iran are fire, has been firing missiles at Israel. Israel threatening uh, serious revenge. We're on the edge of something quite big. So uh, more of that when we come back.